Oh, right, all right, all right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Florencio Files, the literal bad guy from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, because that's who he thought the hero was and the main character in that show, because, yes, he's one of those people. This is Florencio. Yeah, Florencio's the guy who really thought the Empire were bringing peace and civilization to people in Star Wars and, and couldn't understand how anyone could cheer for a bunch of rebel scum. Well, down here in the bottom left, the rebel scum in this scenario, or the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, uh, whichever way you want to look at it, this is Rini. So it's a Terran versus Zerg here from Florencio. And uh, we'll take a look at exactly uh, what he kind of continues on. Okay, 15, 15 barracks. 16 supply from building SCVs now. Okay, gets a gas going. Has three SCVs queued up, and the barracks is a solid 15. Oh, no, no, that's 12, 13. Started at 40. You know, no, that's it's only a five seconds late on the barracks this time. Well done, Florencio. What is this? What is that? Why? <laughs> Why are we... Are we going Reapers off this? It's double gas. <laughs> So it's just like, I got a new brand of stupid to show you. And I'm like, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, no. Spawning pool is here. Drones on the way as well. We've got the Reaper on the way. Okay, so it is, it's 2x Reaper. But this barrack... <laughs> He's blocking the third. Florencio's like, I've seen people block the third with an SCV. It doesn't work. They just take the other third. That I found a foolproof way to stop Zerg taking a third base. I'm gonna build a barracks on both third bases. Wait, that's a factory. That's not even a. What? He's, he's gonna let this one finish and build units out of it. Oh my god, he's such a troll. Now remember, you might be thinking if you're new to the Florencio files, he forgot to make an orbital command center. Um, that is a tryhard thing. He does not like doing that. So, no. No. And as I said, he makes it. He's just constantly defying our expectations. At this point, I think Florencio lives to troll us simply by subverting expectation. That's that's all he wants to do anymore. He's like, yeah, by the way, I'm going to make an orbital and drop mules this game. Uh, what's the bet? He doesn't drop a mule till four minutes. Orbital finishes 240. I'm betting four minutes. You, you, you can vote at home and guess. If you post in the comments, I won't probably know if you actually... If you actually guessed before or after we found out, but I'm betting four minutes before the first mule drops. I'm going to keep that orbital selected so you can watch the energy to see when it happens. There's not much going on. We'll see what happens. So factory is building widow mines. There's an armory going down, which means you'll need detection to deal with them. So that's really cute. If the Zerg doesn't have a lair, then you can just kind of contain them with widow mines, right? And just like block their expos and stuff. Oh, this is actually effing hilarious. Oh my God, he dropped a mule at 307. What am I? This is crazy. He actually dropped a mule like 35 seconds in. That's insane. That's the fastest I've ever seen him drop a mule after making an orbital. Usually he's at 150, 150 energy before he drops one. Two Reapers are coming in now. Link speed is not done. There is a Baneling Nest on the way for the Zerg player who <laughs> panic attacked the rocks for a second there, but does end up fixing it. Does end up fixing it. I like that the Widow Mine, he realizes the barracks is weak because that's not finished building. So he's prioritizing blocking that. You can never expand here. And Florencio is, of course, preparing for a corner base. Because this is how you play the strategy game. He's also, he's got a command center at home, a starboard at home. Remember, he has nothing defending his wall, by the way. But he's got Reapers out, so fair enough. And he's going to start putting Widow Mines all around. Now, his opponent has walled himself off now with a Roachhorn and two Evo Chambers. So you can tell this is pretty peak level play. Uh, just, just walling off on two base, you know. Very active Zerg play. Really getting out out amongst it we got what okay so it's sitting sitting in the middle there so that widow mine there florencio a big fan of hiding his widow mines of course and it's going to be building an engineering bay now as well so he could make a planetary reapers running around a widow mine does fire and kill i think it only got one drone now the reapers are trying to distract right now i think he's just trying <gasps> why is he doing this with his reapers this is a hundred percent florencio being like hey dickhead look i blocked your base I, I blocked your base. I you do ring around the barracks, dickhead. And the question is, does the Zerg even realize that there was a widow mine there? And that they need to send a spore? The widow mine kills a bunch of Zerglings. Oh my god, this is so dumb. He's now building Hellions one at a time. A drone ran there. I think that's, yeah, that's the second drone that's died. And now the Hellions are like, hey, do you guys want to come and walk into our flamethrowers in a choke point? 
And Rin's like, yeah, yes, I don't know. What the hell's going on? He's like, well, I think I need Banelings because Banelings will beat Widowmines and Hellions. Oh, no. <laughs> Florencio is building Banshees two at a time. Five and a half minutes in the game. He's floating his first command center down and uh, and you'll see exactly what goes on. <laughs> okay, does the Zerg know how detection works? Let's be real, a fair number of Florencio's wins do come from players who don't know how the detection mechanic works. And I, I don't think the Zerg realizes there's a Widow Mine there. <laughs> the Hellions come in because they want to kill the drone. Florencio, okay, so we can, I think we're starting to see Florencio's master plan materialize here. It's, the more times I deny the drones try to take the bases, um, the more my stiffy break fills up. For those who don't know, in, in games like Final Fantasy, you have what's called a limit break mechanic. And the way that works is the more damage you take over time actually fills up the bar for you to use your ultimate. Now for Florencio, he has a, a stiffy uh, a stiffy break, which is basically where when he gets his opponent tilted enough, he is actually for a rare brief moment able to feel actual happiness something which normally evades him as a being of pure evil who normally only thrives on the hatred sadness and failure of other creatures so it's this rare moment where he can actually be happy as a person slash sewer thing and this moment is really getting that rin cannot understand why he can't take a base has made a layer you know you can build a spore crawler right what lol what happened says silencio oh my god the zerg thinks he is base as well how confused i am <laughs> about expanding how confused i am about expanding oh me no understand widow mine on my base eye oh why can i no expandy he's figured it out he's figured it out he's building a spore crawler holy shit i don't know did he grab a drone from the he told a drone in the main to go build a spore oh my god this player doesn't know what widow mines do <laughs> <laughs> is this what people's ladder experience is? Is this it? Oh my god, he's getting tortured right now. Well, that's a nice surround. But remember, as the frustration level peaks for the Zerg, what do we always see? That we see them think it's a good idea to attack into a planetary fortress. I think it's only a matter of time until Rinny just walks in. The Banshees <laughs> raining down death and the Roach Lingo running around like a pack of headless chickens. And yep, yep, what happens whenever that frustration hits a peak every single time they run into the planetary fortress? There is a certain level of annoyance you can do. It's like just poking someone over and over again in the face. And there's a certain point you hit. Oh my god, I got two drones and a queen, I think that was. Oh my god. There's a point where you hit with Zerg players where they literally develop a serious case of stupid and they run. It's like it's like a, a raging bull. Zergs are absolutely like raging bulls. Another widow mine fires and kills another unit. They just charge into the worst possible scenario over and over. Another unit just walked in and died. I think that was the Overlord that time. And Florencio now has got his two base mech set up. He still hasn't taken a corner expand, which I thought he was going to take a while ago. And he's going three factories and a starport. <clears throat> Uh, two starports plus fusion core. So battle cruiser transition underway. Zerg is trying to drone up this third. Still has not cleared the other expansion. So you can tell that this Zerg is so like distracted and thrown off their game right now. It's trying to drone up and go Hydras, which is actually like that's you could mass Hydra and pretty much beat anything Florencio does because he never upgrades his units, number one, and he doesn't make proper compositions. He'll make like just a handful of battle cruisers, then he'll make 20 Widow Mines, then he'll make 20 Thors, right? It's always like some random, random mix of units that if they were well upgraded and supported, they might be a solid comp, but it never really is. That being said, these Banshees fly in and they are slaughtering right now. Dude! Oh my god, he hasn't even pulled his queens. Dude, the, these Banshees don't have cloak. Have you guys ever seen two non-cloaked Banshees ravage a Zerg this hard? Like, what is even going on right now? Get back to the safety. You know what's funny? The drones actually ran away from the spores. So if the Banshees chased them, they could have actually kept killing them. I mean, there was one spore out there, I guess. The Zerg's economy is deep in Dicktown now. I mean, he can smell Terran Gooch in his nostrils for sure. It's, it's not a good smell, man. That sweaty power armor... It's, I mean, ugh, how do you think they go to the toilet when the battlefield in there, man? It's not pretty, okay? 
Uh, do you have three battle cruisers? Oh, he's got three starports. Three battle cruisers are going to Chad teleport. But the Hydras and Spores are there. They might actually do okay against this. Dude, that first BC is just going to drop. Oh my god, it dies instantly. Dude, he teleports into... He knew there were Spores there as well. I guess he didn't know about the Hydras. But still, oh my god. So he, he loses one battle cruiser. If he can get that Red Point battle cruiser out, that would be really big. He could just run away right now with that Red Point battle cruiser. His Banshees get aggroed in by the Spore. He's going to fight the Spore. <laughs> I won't back down from the fight. That's Florencio's theme song. He says, I was winning the game too much. I'm going to throw these units away now. To be fair, the Hydras don't have any of the muscular augments or groove spines upgrades. The Banshee goes down. The Hydras chasing to their death. The Spores could move down and resecure this base. And remember, there is always so much room for a player to come back first, Florencio, because a, a, a player who is a bit of a norm, someone who hasn't made it to science school, would always have two, three bases, and that you're two, they're two ahead, defeat is inevitable. With Florencio, part of his strategy is to always give his opponent a chance. He's so busy licking up the flavor of killing Hydralisks, drones, queens, and spores one at a time, this battlecruiser, he has not looked home once to spend his money. And that is on purpose. It's because number one, he enjoys killing things. And number two, he wants his opponent to have a chance. If he just wins the game, it's just like, oh, that's not fun. So Florencio really wants his opponent to think they have a chance. And this is often why he loses games where anybody else with any macro abilities at all would have won. This is why he loses those games, right? Like he just dropped a bunch of mules. You'd think you'd take like four command centers now, build your next army. He is, he's just queued up. 15 Hellions. He just queued up five Hellions on each factory with a tech lab and then realized that he's supply blocked. Guys, do you see this? He just queued up 15 Hellions on three factories. That's like three minutes of tech lab factory production. This is the least efficient thing I've ever seen. He's still got a thousand minerals left over and he's like, I guess I'll build one command center. Ah, fine. This is actually peak StarCraft, right? Like, just remember, guys, if you're ever playing someone who's doing cheeky bullshit or things that seem unfair, they're probably not doing much else. And if you just keep doing stuff, you can always make a comeback. Rin, Rinny is back in this game. Rinny has muscular augments, 1-1 one, one upgrades. So the Hydras are actually a decent... They're not amazing, but especially if you get 2-2. Two, two, they're, they're already decent against the BCs. Does really need to remember Groove Spines. Please remember Groove Spines. But he's up on 57 workers versus 44 drones. If Rini can defend a wave or two, secure a fourth base, they're good. That is a big if, though. <laughs> what is this? What is this? What do you call this attack? Oh, it's the... Okay, so the battle cruisers are going to try and fly over here and bait the units into it. Oh, my God. Because he's expecting corruptors to be out. So he wants to lure corruptors into it, was the idea. But he shows it too early. Rini is going to run in. Now, let's see how Rini micros this. Rini needs to just back off from the Widow Mines, I think, and fight the BCs. Rini is not building any fighting units right now and only has 14 Hydras. So all Rini needs to do is make more Hydras and just fight the Battle Cruisers away from the Widow Mines. If the Widow Mines run forward, then you try to hold position Thanks and the not run box. into them. The Battle Cruisers... Oh, my God. This is Fancio's favorite thing, is if he can just run Battle Cruisers back and forth on a ledge, especially with those Hydras not having Groove Spines. Oh, my God. Oh, and the Zerg's like, I'll build spore crawls here. Just kill the Evo Chamber. Please open your fucking wall off. Oh my god. Command Center does go down at the third. But remember, Florencio does not transfer workers down to that base yet. It just sits there. There is no looking at home during this. There's only looking at home once he wants to run his 20 Hellions in, which will only happen when he's done savoring the flavor. Some people say it's mad flavor. Some people say it's insane flavor. Some people say it's effing disgusting and playing with his food. I would say it's a little bit of all of the above, but I think it's important for us to study and watch this because it's just so much more fascinating than, than what is it, was it Mind Hunters or whatever that, that show was? That, was? that was that was okay, I guess. But I feel like I'm really seeing into the soul of the demented and insane and disgusting things that apparently are orgasmic if you're a sewer moment. Like, for him, he's just like, oh, yes. <laughs> my, uh, my stiffy break is at least half full. And I'm like, oh, Jesus. And he's like, I just need a little bit more torture to get there. Oh, no, Rini! Don't do that! Don't do that! No! <laughs> at least clear the widow mines! What are you doing? At least clear... Okay, okay. Oh, my God. 
Oh, at least clear all the Widow Mines. Come on. If, if any of these Widow Mines just get us an absolute travesty, dude, that fight was actually just disgusting. Oh, shit. Sorry, guys. We don't have the battle report on. Apparently, I did an ac accidental, accidental instant rewind. We get to watch that glory again. Oh, okay. Okay. Apologies for that. Apologies. Uh, accidental instant rewind. Breaking the immersion. Pig, I thought it was a live game. I thought you were literally just watching Florencio play live ladder games. Re... Uh, what can I say, guys? It is what it is. It, 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 it is what it is. Thank you very much, Hellions. It is now time to show the Zerg what barbecue tastes like. The Zerg player, Rini, right now is already, I think, traumatized from the, the, the friggin' 4th of July fireworks over there towards the 4th base. Is now trying to chase down 20 Hellions with three slow roaches and five hydralisks. Um, if you guys were ever wondering what an artist's depiction of sadness would look like, this this is one impression of what that looks like. I was like, I have some roaches and hydras. They don't really have upgrades, but it's gonna be, we can maybe, I'll make a baneling. One, one baneling might turn this. <laughs> Stop building corruptors. Oh my God, there's so many spores here as well. Ooh, transferring drones. The crazy thing is you've always got room to come back, right? Um, in this game, I think it's going to be harder than normal because there's so many BCs. But that being said, I mean, you've got Corrupt Attack, which does counter BCs pretty hard. And Florencio has been known to launch six or seven Yamados all onto a single Corruptor. Like, he is known for that. This is not a one-off mistake. Like, he's the guy who will fly in, Yamato eight different buildings, not killing any of them, and then lose all of his battlecruisers to Corruptors. Like, so don't, don't count Rini out just yet. Oh, no! How did any of these Widow Mines survive, by the way? Come on, Rini. How did you not run them down? You were right on top of them. Right on top. Oh, my God. Okay. So the Zerg is going to start Roach Speed. Still no Groove Spines for the Hydras. And at this point... Okay, I think it's over. I think it's over. I think the Zerg is dead. Didn't get a chance to rebuild the economy. And Florencio here just drags his undercarriage, undercarriage across the keyboard of the Zerg opponent. This is basically the most BM thing you could do at a land to someone is, of course, put your junk on their on their peripherals. But that is what Florencio believes in doing because he's a bad person. Hellions are going to dive into the mineral line. The battlecruisers teleport away and says, nah, 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 zero satisfaction. I'm not going to let you kill a single battlecruiser. This is going to be the saddest defeat for you, Zerg player. Rini is just here, shuddering, shaking, kind of fetal position on the floor. And I gotta say, for your own health and safety, Rini, it might be time to leave this game. That Widow Mine is still there? Are you kidding me? <laughs> that Widow Mine's been there since like four minutes in this game. Oh no. And just like a bloody 80s cartoon villain that he's named after, in this case, the Shredder, this is gonna be a sad Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. I mean, Florencio is the kind of guy who finds a turtle on the street, takes it home, and he's like, I'm going to make it my pet, and then drills a hole through its shell so that he can put a leash on it. Like, he's, he's that sort of psychopath. I'm upset. Stop torturing the Zerg. Zerg, leave. Put yourself out of this misery. GG. Tap out. This is this is just straight up Terran, Terran torture. He's like, oh, we're almost at 100 drone kills. He's going to get it, too. Look at this. He's going to get it. 99. Ooh. Oh, the Zerg left just before 100 worker kills. And that is the way Florencio likes to do it. He takes yet another victory, being the filthy, disgusting bastard that he is. Big thanks to everyone who's been supporting the Patreon, keeping the Florencio files and all our other shit going. You guys know who you are, but a special thanks to Modern, Totem, Maxan, Colonel SC, Pimp City, and Apollo God. Thank you for the love, guys. Catch you next time. Goodbye and good night.